Hello friends, welcome to EPG Patsala. Myself, Parthopotim Bora from Department of Sociology, Dibrugar University, Assam. Now, we'll discuss the module Neo Marxist Perspective, Louis Althusser, from the paper Contemporary Social Theory. In this module, we'll basically discuss Louis Althusser as a Neo Marxist. In, in this context, we'll discuss a various understanding of Louis Althusser or various contribution of Louis Althusser within the broader framework of Neo Marxism, as well as we'll also try to critically analyze his work. Louis Althusser is a French philosopher who studied literature and culture in the capitalist society along with ideology. His main theme of study was basically literature, culture, along with ideology in the capitalist society. And interestingly, Louis Althusser was known as structural Marxist. And it is interesting because he tried to combine structuralism, which is a historical in its nature, with Marxism, which was rather a historical orientation. So his combination or his attempt to combine both structural with Marxism was uh, regarded him as a structural Marxist, which was unique in its nature. On the other hand, although Althusser had a lot of influence over the various scholars across the Europe, but his influence among the scholars in America was relatively less. And it was said that it is mainly because of the polemic nature of his writing that led to the less influence of the work of Althusser among the scholars from America in the initial time. Now I would like to discuss the contribution of Althusser to the Marxist theory of structure. Althusser basically developed two interesting concepts, that is the concept of problematic as well as the concept of social formation, which help us to understand the Marx work on structure. So it is a conceptualization of the idea of the problematic as well as the concept of the social formation, which was developed by the Althusser that help us to know the structure of the the work of the work on the structure that was done by the Karl Marx. For Althusser, problematic as a system of problem and concept that can define the meaning of each other. So for him, we can define the problematic as a system of concept as well as the problem which have the meaning or which have the, which define the meaning with relation to each other. So that was the definition of the problematic that was given by Althusser. On the other hand, he also gave the definition of social formation as one which is complex, decentered, as well as asymmetric in its nature. In this context, Althusser felt that the need of distinguishing a series of level on which the society function. So in, in such a context, the social formation for Louis Althusser is a kind of decentralized aspect. So decentralized or which is a kind of uh, complex or which is as well as an asymmetrical structure. So in such a context, what Althusser was saying, we need to see or we need to look into the different level or the series of level in which the society function. So that was a more kind of social formation or the complexity of the social formation that he used in order to understand the society as a social structure. On the other hand, in another work, that is the Reading Capital, which he published in 1970, Althusser basically used the concept of problematic in order to define the distinction between the classical political economy of Ricardo to that of Marx. So he basically was trying to see how the classical political economy of David Ricardo is defined from that of the Marx in his work Reading Capital. Another interesting contribution of the Althusser was a symptomatic reading of the Marx work. The symptomatic reading of the Marx work was basically the nature of reading that was developed by Althusser and he said that he draws the inspiration of the symptomatic reading from the work of Marx, Freud, Spinoza, etc. So it is basically how he wanted to study the text by looking back into the Marx philosophy itself. So that was the characteristics of the symptomatic reading whereby Althusser was reading the text of Karl Marx. On the other hand, he was doing the reading of the text by looking back to the philosophy of the Karl Marx itself. 
So it, is, it was a kind of divulging or undivulging the event of the text that he is reading. On the other hand, it is movement of the related to the defined text present as a necessary in the first reading. So he basically talk about the how he was looking at the work of the capital in the context of the Marx work it refers to the predecessor. He said that the Marx understanding or the Marx philosophy that was seen in the capital was implicit or in the other, other hand it was part or implicit in the mature work of the capital. He basically said that the symptomatic reading of the Karl Marx in capital involves a reading which involved two radically defined reading principles. First, it mainly associated with the Marx study of the discourse of his predecessor by means of his own discourse and second the reading associated with the oversight which is not able to see within his own work. For example, in Capital, Marx read the work of the earlier economics like Adam Smith on the basis of his own work and tried to find what the Smith failed to find through his own work. So it is basically the kind of reading that was developed by Althusser in relation to the Marx own work on Capital. So in the capital, what he said, uh, as Althusser said, in the capital, Marx first tried to read the work of the predecessor, that is the work of the Adam Smith on the basis of the own philosophy or own Marxian philosophy. And secondly, he tried to understand what was lacking in the Marx work in the second part. So that was the basic idea of the symptomatic reading that was developed by the Althusser, especially with reference to the Marx work. And it is interesting in the sense that he draws, as he already himself said, he draws his inspiration from the Marx itself. Next important contribution that I am going to discuss is the theory of state as it was developed by Althusser. So as I already mentioned, Althusser basically belongs to the broader school of neo-Marxist perspective. So as a result, his understanding of state also fall within the broader orientation of neo-Marxism. Althusser understood state in terms of state apparatus. So as you, as you know, he, uh, he tries to see how the state can be explained in terms of the state apparatus that it possesses. So it's the state possesses some apparatus that basically characterize the character of the state. So it is the neo-Marxian understanding of the state that was given by Althusser. So on the basis of the various Marxist classic or the, on the basis of the various classic work on the Marx that are available, Althusser basically draws the four important characteristics of the state. So on the one hand, he talk about the repressive character of the state. On the other hand, there are always some repressive apparatus that are associated with the state. Secondly, he talk about that the power of the state and the state apparatus must be distinguished. On the other hand, the state power and the state apparatus need to be distinguished in understanding of the state. So the third characteristics of the state that Althusser was talking was basically concerned with the objective of the class struggle that concerned the state power. And he said that in consequence of use of the state apparatus by the classes holding the state power as a function of their class objective. So it means that the classes which want to hold the state power in their class struggle. And last, that is the fourth characteristics of the state power or the characteristics of the state that is given by the Althusser was that in the context of the state apparatus, proletariat must acquire the state power in order to overthrow the existing bourgeois state apparatus. So the fourth important characteristics of the state that is given by the Althusser is that there is a need by who is the proletariat class need to acquire the state apparatus that is earlier hold, held by the bourgeois state apparatus. On the other hand, Althusser argued the state or apparatus always function as a force of repression and it always serve the interest of the ruling class. So it is the basically the repressive force. On the other hand, the state apparatus always work as a repressive force and it always represent the interest of the ruling class which is one of the interesting character of the state apparatus as it was seen by Althusser. For Althusser, ideology has a social function 
which is not to produce knowledge of the real condition of the history of society and in an unconscious phenomenon. On the other hand, Althusser argued that ideology makes an illusion of the historical reality beside constituting an illusion to the reality at the same time. So it basically was giving how ideology give an illusion regarding the reality of our society. So it is not the reality but how the reality is represented as an illusion and this is the ideology. How the ideology say for example he talk about how the state or how the democracy was seen in the capitalist society. For example, in the Althusser argued that state, although it is repressive in its nature, but because of the ideological state apparatus, we do not think the state is repressive. Similarly, we see that democracy is egalitarian in the capitalist society because of the ideology that is working in our society. So it is the illusion that is presented by ideology that was explained by Althusser. Two of the important characteristics of ideology as mentioned by Althusser need to be stated. First, ideology expresses imaginary relationship to reality. Second, society ideology primarily consists of the ideology of dominant classes and hence bourgeois ideology dominant other ideology. So he basically said that ideology try to see the kind of relation that we kind of imaginary relation that we have with the reality. So because of the ideology or the because of the presence of particular ideology, we try to explain our relation to the particular institution or particular reality in not real term, but rather it is a kind of imaginary understanding. Say for example, how we understand our relation with the democracy or how we understand our relation with the state is not a kind of real understanding, but it is a kind of imaginary understanding. And secondly, as Althusser said, the ideology is always the ideology of the dominant classes. So say for example, in the capitalist society, it is the ideology, which is the ideology of the bourgeois class, which will always dominate the society. Again, Althusser said that the state apparatus in the Marx system are all those institutions that help to perpetuate the economic dominance of the ruling class. So it means that it is basically the state try to perpetuate the economic dominance with the help of the state apparatuses. He basically talk about the multiplicity or the plural character of the state apparatus in ideological state apparatus. Say for example, he talk about the ideological state apparatus in terms of religious ideological state apparatus educational ideological state apparatus, then he also talk about family ideological state apparatus, he talk about legal ideological state apparatus, political ideological state apparatus, trade union ideological state apparatus as well as communication ideological state apparatus or cultural ideological state apparatus etc. So they are the diverse or the multiple ideological state apparatus that exist in the society. That was the one of the important contribution of the Althusser. So it is a plurality which was important in the context that how the plurality of ideological state apparatus says as a body, it is not immediately visible. So that is interesting to know that although they are plurality, it basically works by the phenomena of ideology. So it is although they are plurality of the ideological state apparatus, it is not visible. What Althusser said that while a repressive state apparatus says, may entirely belong to the public domain. It is interesting to note that ideological state apparatuses belong to the private domain like SARS, party, trade union, families, some school, etc. which are private. So it is the private nature of the ideological state apparatuses which distinguish it from the public nature of the repressive state apparatus. On the other hand, Althusser also argued that class to hold state power for the longer time, it is in needed to have a kind of hegemony over the state ideological apparatus. So if a particular class want to continue its dominance over the state or if it want to continue of dominance over the state power, there is a need of hegemony over the state ideological apparatuses. So it was a 
the role or the significance that the ideological state apparatus play in the perpetuation or the continuation of the state power. So thereby, if it is because of their role, if the state particular class want to have dominance, it need to have hegemony over the ideological state apparatuses. So as we are already looking into the concept of how the ideology or how the ideological state apparatus were important. Now, we will look into the question of ideology in relation to the art that was developed by the Althusser. So, his important work was a letter on art that was published in 1966 was the main work of Althusser in this area where he tried to see the relation of art to the ideology within which it is produced. So it is basically how there is a relation of the art to the ideology and particular ideology or within a particular ideology art is produced and the understanding of the relation. So within the understanding of this relation how the art is related to a particular ideology from the important or the distinguishing factor of the work of Althusser that is a letter on art. For Althusser, the relation that the art have with knowledge is defined from the relation that the science have with knowledge because while the science is associated with the production of knowledge but art may not be associated with the production of knowledge but art may have maintain a specific relation with that knowledge. So in that context he said that there is a need to make a distinction between the science relation to knowledge and art relation to knowledge. Despite the fact that arts may not produce knowledge, but it do maintain a distinct relation to that of knowledge. Althusser also argues that art help us to understand the nature of ideologies and how it perpetuates the exploitative relation in the social society. So we know that there are some exploitative relations in the society and it is basically the art to help us or which help us to know how this exploitative relation are actually perpetuated in society. So on the one hand we know that we have already seen how art help us to know how it maintain a distinct nature to the knowledge. So it may be the fact that art may not be associated with the production of knowledge that is the fact that science associated with the production of knowledge but it do maintain a relation to the knowledge as I already mentioned. But what we also need to keep in mind, art is also associated with understanding the exploitative relation. That is the interesting factor that we can understand the exploitative factor or the exploitative character of the society on the basis of the art. Althusser and his work on philosophy is another broad theme that we need to discuss in this context. So his work on the philosophy is basically developed or emerged in relation to the Lenin philosophy. He was trying to make a critical understanding of Lenin philosophy and thereby he is providing his own understanding of the philosophy, the role of philosophy, the nature of philosophy that need to be. Althusser argued that philosophy is an ideological production. So for him, philosophy is an ideological production who is held in the continuation of the nature of socio-economic relation. So it is a basically on the one hand it is an ideological production, on the other hand that ideological production held in the perpetuation or in the continuation of the existing socio-economic relation. Althusser argued that genuine philosophy of the work is as a theory of theoretical practice for him, so as a result for him. The theory of theoretical practice is a genuine philosophy. So if we want to see the genuine philosophy, we need to focus on the what is the theory of the theoretical practice. So he means by the theory of theoretical practice as the scientific practice by means of who is he want to distinguish the concept and the scientific one that help the science to transform idea into scientific knowledge. So by means of the theory of theoretical practice, he basically says the ideas or the concept that help the science in order to transform the scientific ideas into the scientific knowledge and this is the theory of theoretical practice. So there are some concepts or there are some means by which 
we can transform the scientific ideas into scientific knowledge. So as I already mentioned, the understanding of philosophy that was done by the Althusser was associated with the understanding of Lenin philosophy. So on the other hand, he had a critical understanding of the Lenin as a political philosopher. So what are the work of the Lenin that were associated with the political philosophy? Althusser studied the relation that the politics have with the philosophy by means of the relation that the Lenin had with philosophy. So he wanted to see what the relation that the politics have with the philosophy by means of understanding the relation that the Lenin was having with philosophy. So that was a kind of interesting understanding because Althusser was not trying to see in a kind of like uh, broader framework but he was basically trying to contextualize with the work or the, with the like man Lenin uh, how it, he was associated with the philosophy or how it was associated with the politics. Althusser was associated with the analysis of philosophy of Lenin by trying to do a political exploration of the orthodoxy of both Marx and Lenin and Althusser argued that the orthodoxy of Lenin in the context of underdevelopment of the scientific Marxism like that of Marx. So while understanding the Lenin as well as while understanding the Marx philosophy, he was basically saying that they were orthodox in its nature. And he said that that was basically the underdevelopment of scientific Marxism that was seen both in the context of Lenin work as well as in the context of Marx work. So because of the underdevelopment of scientific Marxism, he said that it is a kind of orthodox Marxism. On the other hand, Althusser argued that Lenin and philosophy need to have a different orientation because for him, Lenin in fact could anticipate a day of non-philosophical theory of philosophy. So he said that Lenin and the philosophy need to have a different orientation because Lenin, he could also see, on the other hand, Althusser could also see how Lenin was basically looking for a day when there will be a non-philosophical theory of philosophy. So it was a kind of interesting understanding whereby he was looking for the Lenin understanding of non-philosophical theory of philosophy. He also said that in some way, Lenin was intolerable for the fellow philosopher. So as I was mentioning, the Althusser was basically looking into the Lenin philosophy. And he said that for the fellow philosopher, Lenin was intolerable. And there was some reason. He said that because of the pre-critical character of his philosophy and the summary aspect of some of his category, philosopher feel and know that they are not associated with the real question. So as a result, he was intolerable for the other fellow philosopher because on the one hand, they were pre-critical in his nature. On the other hand, as Althusser thought, the Lenin question of philosophy were not real in his nature. So as a result, he said that Lenin as a philosopher was intolerable for the fellow philosopher. They also feel that Lenin is profoundly indifferent to their objection. Althusser argued that Marxism as a philosophy, it is a philosophy of praxis. So it means that Marxism as a philosophy need to be new practice of philosophy that can help in the transformation of world by the masses. So as a theory of praxis or as a theory of praxis that was developed by Althusser with reference to the Lenin philosophy, he tries to see how Lenin tries to use the Marxist philosophy in order to the to, for the transformation of the world, how it can be used for the transformation of the world by the masses. So that was a kind of uh, Althusser work with reference to the Lenin philosophy and how it was a kind of praxis that was an important component of the Lenin understanding of Marxist philosophy. As we are basically discussing the work of the Althusser, there is also need to have a critical appraisal of the Louis work of Louis Althusser. So there were many criticisms that was raised against the work of Louis Althusser. One of the important criticisms that was raised against the work of Althusser is that he, while providing the periodization to the work of Karl Marx, it was arbitrary. So when Althusser said that we can periodize the work of Karl Marx, 
and when Althusser said that 1865 can be seen as epistemological break for the work of Karl Marx, it was criticized because it was seen as an arbitrary depiction of periodization of the work of Karl Marx. Some scholars also said that Althusser failed to draw a difference between the ideological form of humanism and concept of human reality that is given by Karl Marx. So, there is a distinction between the ideological form of humanism and that of human reality in the work of Karl Marx. Uh, on the other hand, Althusser failed to draw the distinction that exists in the work of Karl Marx. It is also said that the work of the Althusser in the reading of the work of alienation by Karl Marx by, as an ideology failed to make a distinction between the appearance and reality. So, the, there is a need to make a distinction between the appearance and reality in order to understand the work of alienation of Karl Marx and it was basically failed by the Louis Althusser. The popularity or the kind of the contribution that the Althusser made, the necessary popularity that received in the work started decreasing immediately after some time of the French Marxists because uh, the French Marxists started criticizing the work of Althusser especially with reference to the how Althusser criticized the French Revolution on the other hand. On the other hand, he also did not take part in the demonstration that were taking, taking part in the French society. So as a result, the people were criticizing because of his non-participation in the various demonstrations that were taking place in the French society as well as because the Althusser criticized the French Revolution itself. So as a result, because of that, the influence or the popularity that was the Althusser was receiving started decreasing over the period of time. In spite of many criticism, we need to keep in mind the rigorous and the synthetic nature of the Althusser work help us to know the complex nature of the Marx. So it is basically the complexities of the Marx work was because of the one of the contribution was because of the work of the Althusser. So in that way, Althusser was successful to see the complex character of the Marx work. Although there were some criticism that was raised because of the Althusser work, the new understanding of the Karl Marx work on the basis of the various concepts that I already discussed, the symptomatic reading of the Marx as well as the idea of social formation that were developed by the Althusser will inspire a legacy of the scholar over the years. So in this module, we basically discuss the concept of the structure that was given by the Marx, which was understood by the Louis Althusser, as well as we also discussed the concept of state in the, within the new Marxist perspective that was given by Althusser. So in the context of state, we basically saw what are the characteristics of the state that was understood by the Althusser and how he understood the question of ideology and how he tries to sort of define state apparatuses the role of the state apparatuses, the ideological state apparatuses as well as repressive state apparatuses. So in that context, we basically explain the ideological state apparatuses, the character, nature, the role it plays in the society, how it helps in the perpetuation of the domination. On the other hand, how the particular class can perpetuate its domination by having control over the ideological state apparatus. At the end, we are having the critical reappraisal of the work of Louis Althusser. For the further detail, you can read the references that is given at the end of the module that will help you to clarify the work from the original work of the Althusser as well as from the critical works that is associated with the Louis Althusser. Thank you.